Today's video is addressing a super popular viewer request. It's actually the most common question that I get in the comments on my channel. Which printer do I use and of course why? So I've been printing papers and images for my junk journals for several years now. I make junk journals and then I fill them with pockets and envelopes and tags, that sort of thing but not particularly in big volume. I mostly use book pages for my journals. So I'd say my printing needs are fairly modest, but even at that level, the costs can be quite high. Personally, I think the process to go through when you're buying one can be quite stressful and you don't always know what you want. So today I'm going to share all the inside knowledge I can about my printer, so this printer here. So I'll talk you through the production capabilities and how I use it and I'll, I'll share a few examples so you can see the quality. But specifically what I want to cover today is what it cost me to buy this and what it costs to print each page because I think that's really, really important today to manage that craft budget. I've put together a suggested requirements checklist so maybe the sorts of things that you want to consider when you're replacing or you're just buying a printer for crafting for the first time. These are in Pinterest and you can take a screenshot and hopefully all of this will make life a bit easier, a bit less stressful and a bit more cost effective when you're coming to play with paper at your craft desk. So this is an Epson 3750, so a 3750 inkjet printer. It may not be produced today, but there are plenty of inkjet printers from Epson that are produced. I'm sure you'd be able to find an equivalent. So there it is, it actually says it. Can we see that? Yes, I think we can. And this has an eco tank. So I'm able to fill the tanks of ink down here with individual bottles of ink, black, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And I'll talk you through specific costs for each of those, which makes it quite economical. It's not too big. This is an A4 piece of paper that I have on the top, so that would be 30 centimetres by 21. You can see it's just a little bit bigger. So it's not you know, overly dominant on a desk if you wanted to still have some crafting space left. The way that you work it is pretty user-friendly, pretty intuitive. So it has a display here and you just press these buttons. I quite like this tray down here which holds the paper as it comes out so you can set it to print and walk away and they don't all go over the floor if you remember to pull it out. The paper goes in here so that's really easy to refill. I am not technical by the way. Technology, not my thing, so this has to be user friendly. In fact, if I pull that right out you can see this blue bit here is something that you would adjust if you wanted to put different sizes of paper in here so that just goes back in and I find that unlike some other printers it does go in the paper goes in quite neatly and tidily into that tray which helps it feed through without problems when you come to print it's just talking to me it's actually a printer a scanner and a copier so I'll just remind ourselves of that perhaps when I come to talk about the costs which I will talk through and if you want to, oh, got something on there. If you want to scan or copy, you just put something under there. Very easy to get at. So the basics are that it's a modestly sized, I would say quite reliable printer. And I'll show you the quality of the papers that it prints in a second. I'd be really interested to know what sort of printer you have so do drop a comment down below and let me know what you use and then we can all read and see what we all have and the variety and whether you like or you dislike the printer that you've got. These are the colours of ink so just on the little tanks there I mentioned the four colours they're not in order here but these are the four colours so this is what the boxes look like that I buy so they all look quite similar. There's the blue, there we go, each of the colours. And I've actually taken some out of the boxes so you can see them as well. The black one's a little bit larger, 
probably because we use more of that. So these are the ones that you can see have been used to top up those tanks. It's an eco tank. And I actually use a bit more of the yellow. So when I come to talk you through the detailed costings, I'll factor that in. I think when we produce things for our junk journals, I, for example, tend to use yellow a bit more in my printing. So I've been through an extra bottle of yellow in my time and I'll I'll talk you through how I factor that in to work out what my cost per sheet is. So those are the technical specs and what it looks like. Let's just delve into some of those costs a little bit. So this Epson ET3750 cost me £350 in August 2018 and I'll be I'll be honest I thought that was a huge amount of money to pay for a printer. I bought cheaper ones before and they've kind of reached the end of their life relatively quickly. When I bought the printer, I also got two of those bundles of ink. So if we call this a bundle, the four colours that we need to fill the tank, I got two sets of these, so we'll call this a bundle. So if I convert that to dollars just to help, that's about $380 at today's exchange rate. If I were to go and buy one of these bundles, then that would cost me, for the four colours, and you can buy them individually, these prices. So in pounds, British pounds, it's currently about £13.50 for the black. I'll show you the, so a bottle like this, quite a lot, isn't it? What do you think? Feels expensive. The yellow is £6.93. The cyan and the magenta are £7.49 and £6.93 respectively. And basically what that means is to buy a bundle today would cost about £35. And the reason I'm telling you this is there's a couple of reasons. Number one, if you do use one of these colours more, because that's the nature of the projects you do. So I said I use the yellow one more frequently. I use it up faster. This system with an eco tank means that you can buy another of these individually, fill the tank and just keep going. So with other multicolour cartridges, I think that you might be using another fresh cartridge and have to replace because you've run out of one colour. So that's just something to think about. If I strip the cost of these bundles, so I bought two bundles in my £350, if I strip them out of that total of £350, I can get a cost for my printer on its own and that comes out at about £280 or $311. So if I didn't have the, the ink, if I take those out of the cost that I paid for the whole thing, the printer and two bundles, the numbers to think about are £280, okay it was in 2018, uh, and that is $311. So it's a comparison point. It's still a lot. So what I will show is how that is relevant to managing your cost per sheet when you come to print beautiful things like all of these and create your projects. I also get a lot of questions about the nature of paper I use. So very quickly, this is the brand of paper that I use, Navigator, and I buy it in 90 GSM which means it's not the really thin copy paper. If you use really thin copy paper, I suspect the colours would bleed a bit more. So I trade up a bit and I either use a, a type called bright white or more recently I've got a type called silky touch ultra bright. And I think this makes quite a contribution to getting crisp, clear lines when I print and vibrant colour. So think about the paper you use when you're printing. It's not just about the printer. But it's not all about costs. Let's have a little chat about the quality of the printing because that's really, really important and maybe a few of the variety of ways in which I print. So quality is obviously very, very important to us as crafters. So I thought I'd show you a few of the papers that it prints. And when I talk about quality, I really do want images that pop where I don't see bleeding in the paper. So this is one example. I've actually been adding gold paint and wax to it. That was just a bit of a play with a project a few weeks ago. So I think that's 
that one works really well you can see how look at I mean look at those colors look at those gorgeous I've printed on vellum in fact I have a video on my channel showing how to print really easily on vellum to get it to go through without any problems and again look at this I've got some stunning images this is Victoria designs and those images are they're deep they're gorgeous rich colors and there's no bleeding there it's just another page of a more vintage style let me show you a couple of maybe a page or two so I said I fill my junk journals they're mostly made of book pages but with the printing I can get mushrooms like this on this belly band and just look at that butterfly it's stunning all done with this printer so many beautiful images that I've been able to print I've used the scanner on it now you may not use scanning much I don't know but I took an image that I painted so I came up with a toadstool and I just put that on the top of the printer so I put my image it was I think it was on a page in a journal so I had to squish it down I put it in here I put the, the lid down and I scanned it and then I've got something to play with in my other creations so this is what came out of that that's quite an efficient way if you've got some Im images you like I think it's great with vibrant eclectic designs and very importantly some of our smaller images where the text is quite small like on this little thumbnail here I'll show you the I'll show you another page that I scanned actually just so that you can see the sorts of things I pick so this is a bit of an art journal that I was filling some time ago I ought to have another go at some of this what do you think so I know somewhere I've been able to scan this and it did pick up all of the detail you really wouldn't know the difference between the original and the scanned image and just to give you maybe one more example so for a I think this was a February spread I created a flower so I painted this and in fact I struggled to know whether this was the original or a scanned image that I'd then printed but I did find another that I had printed and the only way that I could tell was if I sort of got it on an angle and felt the petals here so that I could see whether it had I can feel the acrylic paint on that one and this one's flat so I'm just going to say the quality is really really good if there's any ever a chance of me choosing settings I put settings on the highest quality and that means I can even get beautiful crisp edges on my labels I really like the labels here strong black and white and the printer works really well for them occasionally I get little lines in the printouts and I think that's fairly common and I wanted to be completely transparent and just show those to you so I made these watercolour strips the other day and I added some pieces of ephemera on top some beautiful butterflies and I realized after I'd made one so let me just show you this one here that I had got like little striations in the printouts and it happens from time to time and it's when I think the printer heads just need a bit of cleaning so I don't know if you can even see it I can see it just a little bit of a line in the image enough to irritate me now what I need to do if I start seeing this is just press a button on the printer and initiate some kind of cleaning and it can take a few minutes but it's very easy so I would just press something here it would probably have a message in the display and it would do its cleaning and then you'd start again I would probably monitor it while it was doing its first print to check that the lines have gone and and then it will be okay it does mean that I don't set this printer up to print let's say 100 sheets at a time just in case it went into that mode where it needed a bit of a, a print head clean. I promised you lots of cost information so let's just take it down a level now and really get into the nitty-gritty of the cost per sheet. So in the requirements checklist right up front I put cost and I have mentioned the cost to buy the printer but I wanted to take down the analysis to the cost per page so I've set out a couple of workings here using different assumptions I thought I'd just talk them through 
I've kept it quite simple, hopefully to help you make your own comparisons and go away and, and make your own decisions about whether you keep, replace or buy a new printer. So since I bought it in August 2018, I have actually used £77 worth of ink. It's not that I've bought that, I've actually calculated what I've used up. And that is two of those bundles, so the bundles of four, I've used two of those and then I've actually used an extra one of the yellow. And the period over which I've used those is at the moment 50 months. If you look at Epson's information, they suggest what's called a page yield, new phrase to me, I'm learning this, which is 6,000 pages per bundle of those four bottles, so the collection of four. So that would suggest that for £77 I've had, let's call it two bundles, I used an extra yellow, but I'm just going to call it two bundles. For £77 I've had 12,000 pages printed, and when I send check that over the 50 months, that suggests 240 sheets a month. That felt like a lot to me. So on the right hand side, I've got what I would call a more realistic set of assumptions. I've used the £77 worth of ink in those two bundles. And I'm going to say that I have printed about 100 sheets a month. So 5,000 rather than the 12. And what this means is that under my own assumptions, I'm getting about one sheet equaling about one and a half pence per sheet. And over here, where it's slightly more aggressive, it's suggesting it's less than a penny per page. Yes, I did say that. Less than a penny. I feel that these assumptions about quantity are much more realistic. I don't believe I produce 240 sheets per month. But I would point out that for busier crafters who are maybe producing and making journals, using printouts, so using beautiful sheets like this, 240 might be something you do in a week or even more. So the quantities, I think, are very relevant. You might say, but Joey, you spent an awful lot to buy the thing. And if we go back to this, I did indeed spend £350, or if I strip out the ink cost, 280 So if I take the £280 cost of the printer and I divide it by 5,000 sheets, it adds about five and a half pence per sheet. So we're getting to about seven pence a sheet if I say that this little baby is worth nothing now and it's all done in, and it's not. And if I divided the £280 by 12,000 sheets, you know, that would be even less. We're probably down to about an extra three pence per sheet over here. Very cheap, very cost effective, cost per page, I would say pretty good quality for what you get. User friendly, not too big and reliable, but I would love to know what you think. And if you found this video helpful, I would absolutely love it if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you do love paper and you like making journals, then check out this video here where I make a junk journal really easily, step by step.